This is Mac OS Ken. A look at Apple phone numbers, Apple news around the holidays, and a strange case of bribery and security. It is Tuesday, the 24th of November, 2020. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken, brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Simply Safe. Get 40% off any Simply Safe system and a free security camera at simplysafe.com slash macOS can. This show is also sponsored by BetterHelp, online counseling that's there for you. BetterHelp was made for today in a couple of ways. First, they were built to be online. Rather than sitting face to face with a counselor in these socially distancing times, you find one using the BetterHelp app. You meet via voice, video, or text. Everything is handled at a distance, which makes it perfect for today. The other way it was made for today, today is tough. If world events are getting to you, or if there's something else that's been getting you down or holding you back, you're not alone. So many people have been using better help that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. If you need help, BetterHelp is waiting. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. One more time, it is betterhelp.com slash macOSCan. And a big thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's show. How are sales of the various models of iPhone 12 going? We'll never know for sure. But that won't keep the financial folks from guessing. I'm sorry, guesstimating. Philip Elmer DeWitt's Apple 3.0 had UBS analyst David Vogt telling a tepid tale. Then again, he's ho-hum on Apple, so maybe that's not surprising. Bottom line, he thinks iPhone expectations might be a bit high for the current quarter, thanks to ready availability of iPhone 12 mini and the standard iPhone 12. Then again, the more expensive iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max are both playing hard to get, especially the 12 Pro Max. Quoting his note, initial availability data highlights strong demand for the iPhone 12 Pro Max version relative to the iPhone 12 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro Max last year. Shortly after launch, Pro Max availability has exceeded three weeks, similar to 11 Pro Max last year and modestly above the 12 Pro. He does point out, though, that the iPhone 12 Pro Max did launch late, so add that to the mix. As for the perceived weakness on the lower end of the line, Vote wrote, while potentially softer demand for the two SKUs does not indicate an earnings miss given the holiday selling season is still to come, it does suggest unit upside might be muted relative to investor expectations just a month ago. Of course, Apple doesn't report unit numbers anymore, so go crazy, man. Go crazy. Vote's got a neutral rating on Apple shares. His price target on the shares is $115. Spinning a somewhat more positive take is J.P. Morgan analyst Samik Chatterjee. Then again, he's double-plus good on Apple, so maybe that's not surprising. Another post from Apple 3.0 had Chatman seeing similar trends as Mr. Vote. Quoting his note, We find lead times for the 12 Mini and the 12 tracking lower than in prior weeks, while lead times for the 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max have been largely stable at roughly 24 days. While he thinks it's too early to know whether unit numbers will meet expectations, he does expect changes in iPhone orders from Apple for the supply chain, he thinks they'll cool it on the Mini and the 12 and ramp up production on the Pro and Pro Max. Chatterjee has an overweight rating on Apple shares. His price target on the shares is $150. Apple is extending its deadline for live events and in-app purchases. 
You may remember a couple of months ago when Apple said anyone running a live event through an app on the App Store that was one to few or one to many, a fitness class or a small seminar, say. Apple said that anyone running an event like that would have to use Apple's in-app purchase mechanism, cutting Apple in for its usual 30%. For that, the company took heat. Since the pandemic hit, a lot of people who run or ran such events in person have moved to online models. Apple heard the complaints and said it would not require such folks to use its in-app purchase mechanism until next month. Now Apple Insider says it's pushed that requirement back. In an update on Monday, says the piece, Apple has now pushed back the deadline until the 30th of June, 2021. Quoting that update... As the world fights COVID-19, we recognize that adapting experiences from in-person to digital continues to be a top priority. Although apps are required to offer any paid online group event experiences through in-app purchase in accordance with App Store Review Guideline 3.1.1, we temporarily deferred this requirement with an original deadline of December 2020 to allow additional time for developing in-app purchase solutions This deadline has been extended to June 30th, 2021. Hey, remember when Black Friday was a day, not a season? Apple seems to. Cult of Max, as the Cupertino company, has announced a four-day shopping event for the holidays that starts on Black Friday, also known as this Friday, the 27th of November. As usual, the company is not offering much in the way of discounts, though it is sweetening the deals with gift cards. Buying an Apple Watch Series 3, a pair of AirPods, or a pair of AirPods Pro will net the shopper a $25 gift card. A $50 gift card comes with the purchase of a 13-inch MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, an iPad Mini, an Apple TV, an iPhone SE, an iPhone 11, an iPhone XR, or a pair of Beats headphones. Picking up an iPad Pro or a HomePod also gets buyers a $100 gift card. And finally, the purchase of a 16-inch MacBook Pro or a 21.5-inch iMac will send you home with a $150 gift card. According to the cult, Apple's four-day shopping event runs from the 27th of November through the 30th. You can take advantage of it through Apple.com and the App Store app by calling 1-800-APPLE and at an Apple Store. It may be my imagination, but the App Store Connect holiday shutdown seems shorter this year. It probably is my imagination. I download blog says Apple is closing up virtual shop on the service from the 23rd of December through the 27th. Apple let developers know, saying the busiest season on the App Store is almost here, Make sure your apps are up to date and ready for the holidays as new apps and app updates will not be accepted the 23rd of December through the 27th Pacific time. Please ensure time for your releases to be scheduled, submitted, and approved in advance. Other App Store Connect and developer account features will remain available. A few people seem to be having Wi-Fi issues with their HomePod minis. Kind of a big deal since it's an internet-connected device with only Wi-Fi for a connection. Cult of Mac says it seems only a small number of units are affected by this. Other HomePod Mini owners are seeing no connectivity issues at all, but the number of complaints is growing online. According to Apple, the thing to do if this is an issue is either reboot the device or restore it to factory settings... However, affected users say that only fixes the issue for a short period of time. To be clear, Apple advises that in a sort of general way. The company has not acknowledged a specific issue with HomePod Mini and Wi-Fi connectivity. More news in a moment, but first a word from Simply Safe, the right way to protect your home and home of a great holiday sale. For the next few days, you can get any Simply Safe home security system for 40% off, plus a free security camera to boot. Getting Simply Safe eliminates a lot of the worst parts of home security systems. 
no salespeople, no contracts, no technicians, no wiring. You choose from their ready-made packages or put together the Simply Safe system that's right for you. Then you install it too. Took me about half an hour to place my sensors and keypad and get the system running. After that, their security specialists take over, monitoring your home around the clock, ready to send emergency help the moment it's needed. U.S. News & World Report called it the best home security of 2020. It won CNET Editor's Choice for home security and was named Best of 2020 by Forbes and Popular Mechanics. And you can have this award-winning security for less. Get 40% off Simply Safe plus a free security camera today by visiting simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. You'll want to decide soon. This deal expires on Friday. That's S I M P L I simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. Give yourself the gift of security this holiday season at simplysafe.com slash macOSCan. And a big thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's show. A strange story out of Cupertino this week. Apple Insider says Apple's head of global security has been indicted in a bribery case involving concealed carry permits. The piece cites a press release from the Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office saying Apple Chief Security Officer Thomas Moyer and insurance broker Harpreet Chada were accused of offering bribes to Santa Clara Under Sheriff Rick Sung and Captain James Jensen to receive concealed firearm permits. That wording seems weird. Offering bribes sounds like they came to the cops looking to play Let's Make a Deal. This was not that. Quoting the piece again, a two-year investigation by the DA's office found that under Sheriff Sung held up issuing the licenses until Moyer and Shada gave something of value. In one instance, Captain Jensen aided in the scheme. District Attorney Jeff Rosen is quoted in the piece as saying, Under Sheriff Sung and Captain Jensen treated the licenses as commodities and found willing buyers... Bribe seekers should be reported to the district attorney's office, not rewarded with compliance. There is a lot to hate about this story, and honestly, I didn't want to do it, except that Moyer is kind of a big deal for Apple, and it could have ramifications for the company. According to his LinkedIn page, Moyer is responsible for strategic management of Apple's corporate and retail security crisis management, executive protection, investigations, and new product secrecy. Speaking on his client's behalf, Moyer's attorney gave Apple Insider a statement saying Tom Moyer is innocent of the charges filed against him. He did nothing wrong and has acted with the highest integrity throughout his career. We have no doubt that he will be acquitted at trial. Things seem to be humming along in Apple's next China. The Economic Times out of India says Pegatron, Apple's second largest manufacturing partner, is ready to drop $150 million for a new factory on the subcontinent. The factory should be cranking out product between the middle of 2021 and the beginning of 2022. However, whether that product will be for Apple remains to be seen. While Pegatron does make some iPhones for Apple, and while Apple partners have been ramping up iPhone production in India, Apple and Pegatron aren't doing any new deals at the moment. Earlier this month, Apple put Pegatron on probation for violating Apple's code of conduct. The manufacturer was said to be in timeout as far as new business until corrective action was completed. That's probably the kind of thing they could finish up before the summer, though. Neither Apple nor Pegatron replied to requests for comment from the Economic Times. And finally today, if you ever get to Vienna, Apple Maps will be waiting. Mac Rumors says the Cupertino company has turned on transit directions for Austria's capital city. 
According to the piece, Apple Maps users in the country can now select transit routes when getting directions between two locations with U-Bahn and S-Bahn train routes included in the coverage. I should correct myself, the transit directions are not for Vienna alone. However, it sounds like that is the only Austrian city with full coverage, according to the report. Coming up in a few minutes, Mountaineer tech expert Jeff Gamut and I talk about our HomePod minis. Where is his? Why did he get one? What does he think? All that and more in a few minutes. Look for that show and subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Don't forget I'm doing the live thing on YouTube today. That is, well, usually Monday through Friday, but Monday through Wednesday this week. 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. Stop by and say hi, youtube.com slash Ken Ray. You can watch replays there as well, or you can grab the audio podcast, Mac OS Ken Live, wherever you get podcasts. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by BetterHelp. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash macOSken. This show is also sponsored by Simply Safe. Get 40% off any Simply Safe system and a free security camera at simplysafe.com slash macOSken. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.